let's look at four ways we can DS vocals in Cubase 11. What is going on? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Very excited to be here with you today, talking about mixing, Cubase, and vocals, because we are gonna talk about how to DS vocals in Cubase 11. But before we jump in, note that my course, the Ultimate Cubase Mixing Masterclass, is available. So the link is down below. Okay, now let's talk about DSing and how we can DS vocals in Cubase 11. Now I'm gonna share with you four ways. So let's jump in Cubase and check this out. Now, when we're talking about DSing, Essing a vocal, we're talking about getting under control some sounds that we have on a vocal, like T's, S's, and some harshness that can pop out of the vocal when we add processing like EQ, compression, saturation, and so on. And those sounds can be very annoying in the mix. So that's why we need to keep them under control. And the first way we can do this in Cubase is by using the DSer plugin. Now you can use any DSer plugins you want. Uh, my go-to plugins as far as DSers goes is uh, are usually the FabFilter Pro DS and the UAD Precision DSer that I love to work with. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the technique itself and work with the uh, the DSer that we have included in Cubase. That is not a bad DSer, by the way. Um, so we also have the version of the DSer straight in the channel strip. Uh, right here, we have that DSer. So if you love to work with the channel strip, you're all covered, you have access to the DSer. First, let's have a quick listen to the track we're gonna work on today and just focus on those little sounds that we have, like the T's, the S's uh, that we have on this vocal. All right, so I don't know if you heard those, uh, but we have like a bunch of little T's and S's, you know, that are kind of annoying. And listen to the chorus. And on this part, we can even notice the S uh, that is like way out of control, uh, the one on the word respire. Okay, so we need to control this one. First, what I'm gonna do here is to evaluate which frequency range is giving me those problems. And usually when we're talking about S's and T's, those type of sounds, we're talking about higher frequencies, you know, somewhere around 6K to 10 or so, sometimes higher. That depends on the vocal. Depends if it's uh, we're talking about a uh, male vocalist or a female vocalist. And so it depends on a lot of factors, the recording, the mic, the position of the mic. Uh, but, you know, it's usually within that range of frequencies. So this is where I'm going to focus on. So I'm going to bring my uh, low filter point at around, uh, let's go to 7, around 7K, and bring that uh, uh, the high part at around... 12, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is to click on solo and that will monitor that range of frequencies. Okay, I can't hear those little sounds um, that I need to work on. I'm gonna go to the chorus. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. We're exactly at the right place. So I actually brought my uh, the high part of the filter above 10K, you know, in my case, I went up to almost 14K, but it does work very well. Now that we have that set up, I'm gonna work on the dynamic section of the DSer. So the, there's the threshold like a compressor because basically a DSer is like a compressor. It's gonna act the same way because it's gonna compress the signal within that frequency range that goes above the threshold point. And we have the amount of reduction that we, uh, that we wanna add to that signal. Okay, now very important to set up the threshold, you know, properly so you don't uh, DS too much. You just want to focus on the S's. Respire. 
Okay, so that's good. You know, we have those sounds under control, the S's, the T's, a bit more under control, which is good. So this is one of the ways we can work DSing in Cubase is by simply using a DSer plugin. Now, you can also add more than one DSer, and I'm gonna actually uh, explain that to you later on in this video, so stay tuned. Next, let's look at the second way, the second tool we can use in Cubase to DS a vocal, and this is dynamic EQ. And now if you have Cubase 11 Pro, you have a frequency 2 that now has dynamic EQ, which is great. And this is exactly what I have here. So I have my EQ band set up to 9.2 kilohertz, and I have a gain reduction of maybe 3.6 dB, which is actually good. Uh, it's a good start point to DS a vocal, because if you add way too much gain reduction, if you go above that, uh, chances are that you're going to end up with a kind of a lisp effect on the vocal, and this is the point where you know you added way too much DSing. Now, the goal is not to remove the S, but it's just to bring those sounds under control, but you're still going to hear them, you know, but they just need to be tamed down a bit. But when you're starting to hear that kind of a lisp sound, just, you know, go back just one notch to find your sweet spot. So that's why I start with the reduction between 2 and 3 dBs, and we go, and we go from there. And same here, you know, adjusting the threshold to the sweet spot is uh, mandatory. You need to, to be careful with that, not to DS too much all the words. You just want to catch those peaks. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go to the chorus. If you want to DS just a bit more, you can actually enlarge the queue in this case. Let me bring the queue larger to check if we can just uh, go a bit wider as far as the frequency range goes. Okay, that's not too bad. Listen to the verse again. Big difference. I'm going to bypass the dynamic EQ. So that's a good start. Now let's look at the third way that we have in Cubase to DS a vocal, and this is the manual way. You do it manually, straight on the audio event. Let me show you. I'm gonna focus on the chorus for this one because this is actually where we have like that big S sound that is like all over the place that I wanna get under control. Okay, so the idea of doing it manually is to just bring down manually that S, you know, that S sound and just bring it down. And there it is. You can actually see it very easily. That is the big, that big wave here. So that is the S sound. If I remove it, okay, I don't have any more S's. So we know we are uh, working on the right wave. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is simply cut that into its own audio event by just uh, selecting with the uh, selection tool and then just clicking on Shift X. That will actually split that selection into its own audio event and then just bring it down. All right, so this is one way you can do it. I'm just going to bring that even a bit lower. Okay, so now I have that S under control. Now, this method is going to take you some time to do it properly, uh, but there's a way to speed things up. And my good friend Dom Sigales once again did it. You know, he made a video on DSing months ago. I'm going to leave the link on top. If you want to go watch it, actually, you should go watch it because it's just a very good video. And in this video, he shares a very cool tip to speed that process up. And the trick is to use a macro with a bunch of key commands to speed things up. So this way I can just select what needs what I need to bring down and just click on my shortcut and there you go. Now I have everything that was brought down by four dBs or so. Then I can just go and find the other S's and bring them down.
that simple. You know, and you do this for the entire song. So this is going to speed up the workflow like crazy. Now, if you want to know how to set that up, you know, that macro up, basically what I'm going to do here is just go to my key commands and show you the commands, you know, but I'm not going to explain everything, all the steps. You know, Dom did a very good job doing so. Go watch again his video. And uh, there you go. So those are the steps. If you just want to, if you want to pause and screenshot that part of the video, feel free to do so. Now let's jump on the fourth way that we have in Cubase 11. And this one is part of the pro version only. And this one is special and it's by working with Spectra Layers 1, which is an addition to Cubase 11. Now, if you didn't install it yet, it's not going to be shown in Cubase. So you need to go into the Steinberg Download Assistant and install Spectra Layers 1 that you have included in Cubase Pro 11. So I'm going to select my audio event. I'm going to go straight on top on audio or I can just right click and I'm going to go to extensions and I'm gonna find Spectra Layers. And there you go. Now, Spectra Layers is very special. It's a way to edit audio in a visual way, basically. You know, it's a bit complex. Um, I actually don't know much about how to work with Spectra Layers, but I know a few things, and this is actually one thing that I discovered not too long ago that is actually very cool and works very well also. There's also Spectra Layers 7, which is the big version, uh, but for the most part, uh, we have like the basic tools with the uh, Spectra Layers 1 version that we can use to DS some you know, some, some part of the vocals like we just did manually, but now we're gonna do the same, but in Spectra Layers 1. So basically what we have here, we have like the a visual representation of the audio we are working on. Now, the lower part of the, uh, the picture basically are lower frequencies, and the higher we go, the higher the frequencies. That simple. And the darker the tone of color, the higher the level. So now what I'm gonna do here, let me just focus on that first S. And look at that, we have it right here. Okay, I'm just gonna select it and there you go. That is the S that we hear. All right, so let's uh, listen to that again. So I'm gonna bring that down manually by using the eraser tool. And when I click on the eraser tool, I have attenuation, an attenuation level that I can adjust to my taste. I'm gonna bring that to 3 dB. So this is gonna bring down and anything that I touch, anything that I select with that eraser tool, it's gonna to bring it down by 3 dBs. This is what I'm gonna do on this part only. So it's just gonna bring down that frequency range. That's it. All right, let's go back just a notch. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. If I do this one more time at the same place, it's going to reduce by an extra 3 dB. Let me solo this vocal. That's pretty good. Let's do it before and after. That is so smooth. Now, this is very cool. So again, you need to take your time and to identify where all the S's are. And it's quite a, it's kind of very easy to do so. They're all at the same place and you can actually see the yellow tone getting a bit darker at this point. You know, so you just do the editing this way. So there it goes. It does a very, very good job. Once you're done, you close down Spectra Layers. And you can see here that this, uh, this audio event is using Spectra Layers because we have the Spectra Layers logo right here on the top right corner of that audio event. Okay, now let's listen to the chorus one more time. <laughs> Way, way better, okay? So this is another very cool way to, especially if you if you wanna deal with some problematic S's that are way out of whack, doing it manually using Spectra Layers 1 is very, very cool and does the job 
very well in a very smooth way, which I like a lot. Uh, now, I want to add up to this video, I want to add up a few tips when working with de-essers that you can use to bring your de-essing process more transparent. Again, the trick is not to use too much de-essing, you know, too much gain reduction, uh, just to avoid some lisp effect. Then you can use more than one de-esser if you want. Uh, for example, I have, uh, if I use this one on top, I can have this one that is going to take care of that range of frequencies to take care of, uh, to attenuate like the S's, the T's. And I can also add a second one that will take care of the harshness of the vocal if I have harshness problems. Um, and usually those are going to be more into the mid range, the high mids, you know, at around 2K, 2.5, that again will depend on the recording. And, you know, adding a second de -esser to take care of that uh, section is going to do the job pretty well if you have some problems in that range of frequencies that you don't want to tame that much, but you just want to have more control. No funny thing, now that I fixed my S's with spectral layers, that de is not even working, <laughs> which is nice. Um, you know, so this is actually a very good way to do so. And same if you're using um, frequency with dynamic EQ to DS, you can use a second one, a second dynamic EQ to take care of that range of frequencies. Let's go to the verse. <laughs> So using more than one de can do the trick. Something that I also do when de a vocal is to de before hitting the compressor. So this way I'm getting control over those little S's and T's and harshness before I go into the compressor. So I'm avoiding feeding the compressor with those problems to start with. And then nothing stops me to add one more de at the end of the chain, you know? to control even more. So I can just do little moves before hitting the compressor and then, uh, depending on where I am in the mix and how that track sounds like, if I need to add a bit more uh, de-essing, I can actually do it afterward and just add an extra de-esser. So this is basically how I like to de-ess vocals in Cubase. I'm first gonna use a de-esser to see how that is gonna sound like. If I need to add a second one, I will. Then if I have some like S's that are all over the place that needs to be controlled manually, I will do so. Because in those cases, I want to avoid having a de working too hard because I don't want that the rest of the track to be affected by that de -esser. So that's why I'm going to just focus on fixing those manually straight on the audio event or by using Spectra Layers 1, which is actually very cool. If you have any questions or comments, leave everything down below. Don't forget to share, to like if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And don't forget that my course, The Ultimate Cubase Mixing Masterclass, is available. Link is down below. Until next time, take care and see you.